All right, Bang Bang, it's the Dave Portnoy Show with Eddie and Company, presented by Trade Zero. That's right, Dave. We have a new presenting sponsor. Yeah, and these guys have been with me for a while. So it's who I use for DDTG. They've been great. Um, I got kicked off of E-Trade because they couldn't handle my volume and my breaks. Like, E-Trade would crash all the time. i go ballistic because it's doing a live stream. I was losing, winning, whatever. So... They actually kicked me off. Trade Zero swooped in, and they've been great ever since. Uh, you know, finally, if the, it, I can make it personal because I have been using Trade Zero for the last, I don't know, six months or whatever, and I have no complaints about it. Zero complaints. The only thing, it took me a while to get used to the flashing lights and I in the new platform, but once it's one or two days of that, it, it's built for people who really want to trade. So I'm glad they're coming on board. Um, TradeZero.us slash Dave. You're going to get three months of the pro trading package for free, which is $177 value. Initial account minimum is $2,500. Uh, and again, it's built for people on trade. E-Trade is built for slubs who like put five bucks in. And if the thing breaks, you can't complain. If you're actually trading any degree of real money, like $2,500, you got to go something more serious. Trade Zero, again, uh, TradeZero.us slash Dave. All right. So while See, we're here. I can give a good read to. Yeah, that was, that was Dave. That was, that was a beautiful read, all honesty Thank you. here. So while we're here, stock stuff, it's been a pretty quiet week, actually. You haven't tweeted much in Miami uh, and whatnot, so we'll stick with this. The big thing well, was- I haven't I'm... been in Miami very long, Eddie. I was in New York. I just got here, like, yesterday. Oh, really? I thought you went on, like, Friday or Thursday. No. no. Oh, okay. Sorry. So regardless, it's it's been a pretty quiet week since last show, but the big news was, everyone, you changed your profile picture. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck's he doing to get rid of the mugshot that's got to be big? That'll come back. The, the yeah. mugshot will clearly come back. Mm -hmm. So what's so what's the deal? Buzz. I saw the uh, press conference. Yeah. So I got approached. I don't know the exact time, maybe like six months ago. And, and I'm kind of sort of like a novice still in my understanding of the stock market and whatnot. But these guys approached me and it makes sense. I'll dumb it down how it made sense to me. Um, they created an algorithm like uh, smart guys, like scientist -y type guys. And it basically scraped social media to find the most positive sentiment on stock. So, you know, if I'm talking about a stock or it's on Wall Street Bets or it's on stock twits, basically, you know, anything, and it tries to find the, the stocks that are most positively being talked about and groups them together in something called an ETF. Did you know what an ETF was? No, I did not. So I, I thought of it sort of like a mutual fund in a way. An ETF, it's the symbol for the stock, which launches Thursday on the New York Stock Exchange, is B U Z Z. And that when you buy that, you're actually buying like 75 stocks in one. So it's this group, and the group is the most positively talked stocks according to this algorithm on a monthly basis, and it switches it up. So I got approached. It had been invented a while ago. Obviously, this year has been like totally different for the stock market in terms of the amount of social activity and stocks going up based on it. They became or thought of me, Penn appeared in their algorithm. And like, oh, look at Penn. They looked at me, DDTG. They're like, this could be what we needed. Somebody to who kind of the face of it. They gave me an ownership stake in it. So that's what it is. Does that make sense? So I think, yeah, no, it, it, it absolutely makes sense. It's kind of like the new age way to kind of see what people are talking about and get right. in on that. Yeah, it's not as I've seen some of it. It probably doesn't have the same upside as like a pen did. It doesn't have the risk. It's it's a more, you know, because it's the aggregate of basically 75, as I understand, 75 stocks. You're not buying one. And I saw that there were there's maybe some confusion. There's a B-U-Z, then there's a B-U-Z-Z. What's what, just so people it's get the right It's B-U-Z-Z. Yeah, okay. my parents told me about it. B U Z, and I'm going on this. I yeah, I is B U Z Z. Okay. Um, so it's Buzz Lightyear. Correct. Because I I know just just there to make is sure, B U Z. That's a Canadian pharmacy company. We're the only B U Z Z. Yes. Okay. All right. Now I'm kind of more interested from the the back end where what it takes for you to buy into someone to come up to you and be like, hey, we got this new thing. Like, who are these dudes? How did you meet them? How did this come together? So I had a connection to one of the guys. Um, 
a, a close enough connection where I had known him for a while, trusted him, and would listen to what he said. Uh, he's somebody I met in Miami, actually. Uh, and he was connected in the financial world. So, like, we're, this this thing is partnered with a company called Van Eck, which is a huge ETF firm. So it's not like some rinky-dink operation. And the thought is, hey, Van Eck can go get institutional money. I can go get retail money, pour it into this ETF, and and make it big. I, you know, who knows? It, the thought process, it all made sense to me. Like, the I, I the algorithm seemed I looked at when they appeared I'm like let me see what stocks are in you know this index the 75 and it was bang 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 like all the stocks I'd been talking about it's like okay the algorithm is 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 right like it sees what I'm from my perspective it, it, it's working those are the stocks that I'd want in it for the most part and then the Van X legit and it made sense. Like, I don't, granted, this year has been unusual with COVID, but I don't think the amount of social chatter on stocks is going anywhere. So, some, it, it's always one of the things that, yeah, somebody's going to do that. Like, this makes perfect sense. There's, there should be an ETF based on positive social chatter on the internet. And by the way, who's kind of like the face of that, at least was until Roaring Kitty showed up? Me, DDTG. I want to call it DDTG. I want that to be the stock symbol yep. that got shot down and we went with buzz. I don't know if we could have done it that way. They were giving me some mumbo jumbo about the SEC and whatnot. So I was like, whatever, buzz works. But yeah, it just seemed like a, a perfect marriage and idea that made sense. I don't do many of them. I'm very selective. There's a couple more coming down the road, probably in the next year or so, not financial, but other projects. But yeah, this made sense. It just it's something that clicked once I understood it. I didn't I was like, yeah, I'm in. It fast. Fast. And when did this person approach you? Maybe 6 months ago. Okay, so this has kind of been in the works. Well, and- I had to do a lot. So the first thing I did was like, yes, I think this can work. And then I'm like, give me all the paperwork, give me everything. I'm sending it to Penn. I'm sending it to Erica. I want everyone to look at this and know what the fuck it is. And if there's even an ounce of, like, conflict of interest, you can't say this, you can't do that, it's like, I'm out. Like, I I need to know I'm totally greenlit and can do what I do, which is promote it, you know, under the same guise as, like, how I do pen. Like, yeah, I think it's great. I would invest in it, but I can't promise, you know, it goes up or whatever. But once I had the sign-off from everybody that, yeah, Dave, you can do this, I'm like, okay, I'm doing it. Okay, now is this person going to come more more public, kind of like how Kearns is and kind of like how uh, Jay Snowden is? Because that's fascinating to me because, like you said, just to get your ear and to have you like somewhat interested. You mean the, is the person who, who approached me with it? Yeah, because you, like, you're like you not. His name is like, Mike Kimmel. Oh, okay. So this is, it's like fine. But he's not like, he he was kind of the matchmaker and put it, and he, he's connected. But I've known him for now a couple of years in Miami. Straight up guy, nice guy, smart guy. So I know he's not bringing an idea to me that's like garbage. Now, it doesn't mean I have to do it, but if, if somebody that I trust comes to me like, hey, I have a good idea, I'm obviously going to listen. This wasn't somebody who was cold calling me. I had a relationship with him. Okay. And All it right. wasn't like he was pitching me ideas in the past. You know, he, he, he's a reputable guy. For sure. Because, you, I mean, you get so much shit. Yeah, totally. And that's like, uh, how did you get to the point where – and like, like obviously on a much lower scale, I think other Barstool employers get a bunch of shit thrown our directions. But how did you get to that point where you're like, I could actually, you know, run with this? Because there's so much that comes through the fucking, through the filter. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's all gut feel. It really is just gut feel. It's like, I need big upside, obviously, or else I, it's not worth my time. Uh, but I, I, it's just gut feel. Again, I trust Mike. He's not throwing a ton of ideas at me. He's got a proven track record of success in his own right. It just was right time, right place. I think anybody looking at this from the outside and what's going on in the stock market and stuff, be like, oh, yeah, that it like, did you watch the video? Yeah, I did. So what's your like gut reaction to me? I watched it like, yeah, that makes sense. Like that. It just. Oh, yeah, of course that it kind of had that vibe to me. Like, yeah, of course, that makes sense. Yeah, it seems like something someone's going to do and then just basically where you are with like it was almost a perfect storm 
with how DDTG came together last Corona, and then now this is here, especially with all the GameStop shit. So uh, yeah, and my my biggest fear with all of not fear, I'm selective. Like I and, and some people be like, yeah, you do. No, you don't. Whatever. I I feel like almost my biggest value right now or currency is credibility. Like basically everything I've touched has worked. So I'm not going to go into something that I'm not confident it is going to work. I There's not a part of me that thinks this won't work. Now, if somehow the stock market crashes or something changes, nobody's going to be winning. Like this doesn't short. So, you know, it's a little different in pen because I don't actually have the physical – like Penn, I will drag to the finish line. I don't care what happens. We're going to the finish line. We're going. The moon is coming. This one, I don't have that same. It's an algorithm doing it, but I believe in it. But that there is that. That was the only, if I would say, slight hesitations. Like, well, you know, if something changes with Penn or the environment, I can react directly and counterbalance that. I can't do that with this. Yeah. That's that's a good point because you really hang your head on where people could say whatever the fuck they want about you, but at the same time you've been successful with pretty much everything you've done. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't tell people or put my name on things that that I truly don't believe will be successful. And luckily, so far everything's kind of been successful. Now, what are you gonna have to do, like day in and day out? It's just just part of the streams, is it? Yeah, nothing. It's just okay. promote it and let people know, like you know, casually. But once it's out, it's out. But it, there's no ongoing, you know, beating the drum. Maybe occasionally we'll, you know, like shareholder meetings or things like that. But it it won't. It's an algorithm. It's just letting people know it exists. So there's no worry where it's like, you know, a hardcore Barstool fan right now. Oh, no, Dave's kind of getting pulled away a little bit. He's, he's you know, he's so he's, he's really on the gaming side. Now he's going to be doing this like there's nothing to worry about as far as that goes. No, I, I mean, I, you know. It, the people who would be worried about that, this won't be the thing that changes it. It's much more, you know, I'm I'm more in Miami more often than not. But th- this singularly won't change anything, no. And I also believe, so this is a Dave Portnoy venture. This has nothing to do with Barstool. Well, Barstool's in it, but it, it's a Dave Portnoy is in it as well. Okay, so it is, it does, it is a company thing almost. Because I was going to say, a little intersection, yes. Gotcha. So, in a way, though, it's kind of the first of its kind, I guess, where this is really your first big, I, I guess I can't say solo thing because you just said Barcelona in it a little bit, but, but yeah, majority. no, it, yeah, the, it, it, it is one of the first that, that I have like private stuff in. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. Interesting. I'm, uh, I'm interested. And then you said it goes live Thursday. Thursday, 9 a.m., I think I'm virtually ringing the bell because they're not doing it in person, but I believe I'm virtually ringing the bell in New York Stock Exchange, which, as I said this morning on DDTG, for those keeping score at home, that means I've rang the bell on the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange. Let's hope it's it's better this time around than last time. Seriously. (laughs) Yeah, worst day in the history of the stock market. I don't remember seeing a 400-point loss on the NASDAQ in a long time, but we are there <laughs> all right besides that a couple more stock things here uh, you went head to head with vlad i think like hours after we recorded last week uh thoughts on that anything there yeah so right we did go after because that's when we wanted to do it, it, it you know it, it's a little obviously it was feels like a while ago now at this point I really thought there was criminal activity with him involved. I don't know if I believe that anymore. I still do believe maybe someone leaned on or not everything's above the board. And if you subpoenaed all the phone records, you'd find something probably. One thing that was I've said in the past, and he wants to actually donate. I think he wants to be like friends. He wants to donate to the Barstool Fund. But I've said this sticking with the stocks. I kept saying, why don't you freeze the prices, buying and selling? And he didn't answer that during the interview, but he hit me up after with his answer, as did a million people. It's like, well, and this was just me not knowing enough or thinking big picture. If he froze both buying and selling, people on other platforms, E-Trade, Meritrade, whatever, could have still sold or traded 
GameStop, and if the stock plummeted and you were on Robinhood and couldn't sell it, I could see how that would have been a major issue. The only people who can actually stop the trading is like the actual, I don't know, stock market, like freeze it everywhere across the exchanges, which they should have done. But I also think if Vlad proactively reached out to the like the other people and was like, hey, we're going to freeze it, you guys freeze it, everyone would have frozen it. So it was an obvious answer he should have given. I still think it should have been frozen everywhere, but I understand why it couldn't just be Robin Hood. So you came out of it respecting him, liking him? I want to say liking him. I don't know about respect. I He just felt like they screwed up bad. And, and his PR, I don't know. It, it's strange. It's like, I've, he, I don't know. He has final say. He seemed unprepared for some of the questions and not a great PR spokesman, which maybe is good. Like, he didn't come across as slick. You know, he came across as unprepared a little bit for what happened. What did you think of the Taco Tuesday hat? I didn't think my. I, I did mean, you was, realize it at the time? Well, he said what it was. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't put together, like, is he doing that because of LeBron? He knows I don't like LeBron. I, I, I wasn't sure. I mean, they, they, they fucked up. And. Overall, I think coming out of that, his biggest thing, which I don't think they ever did a great job, was really like every answer he gave was firm first, firm second, firm third, like customer eighth. And I get if the firm collapses, the customers get hurt, but I, it just it should have been customer, 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 customer because lots of customers got smoked. Yeah, and it was kind of a weird couple of days for you. As you said, you were on tilt. You got duped by a fake Robinhood account. Uh, all the Reddit stocks were fucking smashing, and you weren't there. So uh, yeah. it was it was something. Uh, before we continue, Dave, I want to talk about Can I Pro Gear. We've had these guys before. These guys got some heavy duty real shit. Okay, Can I Pro Pro Gear? It makes the finest backpacks in the world, and no one else even comes close. From military style packs to hipster everyday carry bags, Can I has a pack or bag to fit any one of your needs. Uh, you can go outdoors. You can go to the office. Well, when you can go to the office, it can obviously. So Can I Pro Gear? It has every pack you need. You can enjoy superior craftsmanship and customer service with a company that actually gives a shit about its customers. And all Can I back pack packs and bags come with a lifetime warranty and right now can i is offering free u.s shipping on orders over 75 bucks can i has been all used all over the world and has confirmed firsthand stories of their backpacks serving effectively in active war zones with members of the u.s military and the primary packs of the special operations wing of the secret service what uh what's the promo code there dave do you have it in front of you yeah i got it hey buddy that's a steve che uh, reference 15 percent off uh give a follow at can a pro gear c-a-n-n-a-e pro gear I gotta be honest. The line that caught me in this read—they have military style packs, the hipster packs. That's quite a range. Yeah, that's that's a big range. Yeah. So go get your uh, backpack. Hey, buddy, fifteen uh, percent off, like they said, or follow them on Twitter. Can C A N N A E Pro Gear. Um, other stuff, Dave. Uh, you announced last night, caught some buzz uh, that you will run for president. Well, that yeah. Listen, I'm on some like political. <laughs> I'm on some political survey, like who's going to be the next Republican candidate. And I, I'm i on it, but I have zero percent. So it's almost like someone's just trolling me. I, and what I said is true. I don't want to be on any list where I have zero percent. Why am I even on the list if I have zero percent? Well, you know what they're doing. It's the same way. It's all the time. You know, it's like who's going to be the head coach for this team. And then they'll throw in like, you know, uh, who I'm fucking Bill Cowher, you know, it's like, well, he hasn't coached forever, but you got to throw him on there because it's going to make the odds spicier, you know? But but I think this is actual, like, people are, they put a list and people are actually voting, I think. I, I think it's a real, but if I'm getting zero, take me off the list. <laughs> I look like an asshole on this list with zero percent. So that's what I said. I said, fine. And then someone just tweeted, they're like, if you say you're running, it'll boost you up. So I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm running. But if I don't get to 1% and pass whoever I'm tied with 0%, then I'm out and take me off the list. I hate that I even have to ask this, and you might be your fucking idiot, and people might say that, but are, are you actually running? What do you mean? Well, 
Listen, you never fucking know nowadays. And if you wanted to do it, I could see you doing something like that. You ran for fucking mayor of Boston, but are you just messing around? Like, you're, are you going to throw something together here and you know? We'll do see a PR if I get thing? to. We'll see if I get to one percent. Okay, so if you get to one percent, then what's going to happen? I'm staying in the race if I if I get to one percent. <laughs> okay, then what if uh, what if it gets to like four? Like, will your ears perk up and you'll do a little more or what? I would never want to be president. But I know it, it, it the I would love to be in a presidential debate. That would be fun. That would be awesome. I don't know can, if you get to a certain percent, do they have to include you? That's a good question. I can't say I, I can't. Well, say you, for sure. if someone laid it out and they're like, if you can get to like six percent, they have to include you in a presidential debate. Then I would do it and I would make a mockery of it. So it's not the push to win and be the president because you don't want that. It's the push to be involved in the debate. Yeah, who the fuck would want to be president? I mean, he, I love him or hate him. Trump, I, he wasn't like a hated guy before he became president, right? He was just like a rich guy in The Apprentice. Now he's like fucking people hate him. Why? Who Both wants that? Them. I don't want to be hated like that. Dude, I, I completely agree with you. It's fucking crazy. Like He had like a nice life, I'm sure, before. Yeah, him. right. Now, like... No thanks. Fuck that. Fuck that is right. Do you have any 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 brief thoughts? Any early thoughts on a cabinet? <laughs> I haven't given it that much thought. No, we gotta I gotta get to I listen before we start thinking cabinet. We gotta get to one percent. I we still do. don't know what that means. Zero. I have zero votes. They're just throwing me on there for the hell of it. Like, did I did I do something that got me on that list? I. Now, I could be wrong, but I want to say I saw somewhere, I, I can't I can't recall exactly where, that someone actually, like, did an application for you to, to like, be seriously run. I don't That's know. That's why like, I'm on that list, you mean? May, maybe. May, maybe. Because it's I like, there was like a group of maybe Republicans or and whatnot who are like, hey, this is our guy. W- what would be crazy, so the guy I'm tied with 0%, I guess he's like a real politician guy. Like, what are you thinking then if you're, like, tied with me for zero? I don't know. I guess he's got to start a fucking blog and, and, and see I just how he didn't, does I, it, did, it didn't sit right with me being on that list at zero percent. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, I look like a fucking schmo. Good. I mean, now we're, uh, I guess we're waiting with bated breath to see with what the polls Who's are. Who's voting? Like, I mean, I, it, who votes in these polls? Dude, I don't get any of that shit. It's me like, neither. what's that? Nate Silver guy who does the... Uh, Who's Nate Silver? Or does he do the uh, what's the zero five three eight? And he does like the projections of the caucus. What's a zero like five three eight. I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like the pre poll no, shit. No, the, I don't. Dave, the pre polls they do. Who's where Nate it's like, Silver? Isn't he like the analytics guy who was like so sure that, uh, like I'm pretty sure he, his his algorithm had like Hillary winning in a landslide and then like, oh, things I, went haywire. Maybe. I don't know. It's just whatever. It's the pre. It's the pre. Uh, the pre polls to the okay. whatever. I mean, it's uh, pr- very premature. It is like the second half of the NFL draft is over. Being like, here's your draft class next year. It's like the election just happened. Yeah. How was last week in the office? It was fine. Nothing unusual. Um, you know, I like Miami's weather more, but it was not bad to be back. I hadn't been back in my apartment forever. I got a new couch, so. Uh, Spider helped me let the people in, and I told him and Kareem they could take my old couches. I don't know who needed it, but I also – no one even knows this. I haven't said it, and whatever. It is what it is. But I bought a brand-new, like, footstool for the middle of the thing. It was probably, like, I don't know, five, 600 bucks, and they just took that, too. So I <laughs> I think there was some miscommunication there. But, yeah, the footstool has gone. I got a new couch, but I lost the footstool. Spider scooped your ottoman? Yeah, my, the ottoman. That's exactly. It's gone. It's like a nice leather, like <laughs> Kareem. I think Kareem's on here. I don't know if he could pipe up real quick to see where to see where the ottoman is. But yeah, that's... I thought I thought Dave wanted that out of his apartment too, so we did take that. But where's it live heavy. right now? It's in my apartment. We, oh. Tyler O'Day took all of I our bet couches. It, I bet it looks good. It's, it's was expensive. Do you want it back? <laughs> I mean, it's like. No, I wasn't going to say nothing, but. <laughs> well, now I feel like I have to come bring it back today. I'm in Miami. I mean, nice to have it back. I got, like, nothing. I'm just, like, lit, floppy in the middle of the uh, apartment. But All right, we'll, we'll get it back for you. <laughs> Wait, does it match the new couch? 
Yeah, it was bought together. Oh, so then you definitely need it. It's, it's a difference. It's brown. It's brown. But, I mean, they were bought together. It's like, okay, I have these old couches. I have this gross ottoman. So I bought a new ottoman and a new couch. And the, the ottoman showed up first. The couch showed up second. And then the couch showed up and the ottoman was gone. But I knew there was confusion. I knew it wasn't in. I knew that it wasn't a, a serious case of theft. No, there was, there was nothing like that where Spider was just like, "Here's my opportunity. Yeah, if I'm going to steal anything from Dave, it's going to be this." I've been eyeing thing. that ottoman for, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, yeah, but like I said, it was a pretty quiet week from Twitter. You just take like a little break or nothing going on, or yeah, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't feel like it was overly. I mean, I was around in New York, right? I felt like I was tweeting normally. Um, yeah, it wasn't intentional. You did tweet. I saw uh, you tweeted a little hot dog Chicago flag sweater. What did you think of that design? That was nice. I liked it. Yeah. It was almost like the uh, drive-in thing. Yeah, it's a graffiti you know. artist we have who makes designs. It's fire. So we're just waiting. We've already said it very clearly. For Barcelona Sportsbook, Illinois is the next state, and we're waiting on the official dates. But I plan on being there soon, very soon. For, what, are you going to come for a couple weeks, or what's your plan? Yeah, it, well, we got to get the exact date, right? So I'll be there when we launch, and then we'll look at March Madness. I probably will be there for that. Uh, but we need the dates. We're just waiting on the dates. You want to sub on my bocce ball team? When you say it like that, am I going to get any uh, run? Yeah, no, you'll you'll get in. We're yeah. just like yes, just, yeah, okay. You'll yes. play? Yeah, I'll play. All right, good. Tuesday night. Yeah, uh, Tuesday nights we play. Okay, it's a tough league though. Tough league. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, some... I've I've only played. That's you just roll the balls as close to the other balls, right? Yeah, the Paulino. The small ball is called the Paulino, yeah. Dave. You got to get the big balls and okay. get it closer to it. Okay. It's fucking tough, man. There's some good guys in there. I'm sure there are. All right. Uh, besides that, did you uh, – oh, a lot of people are interested. Did you uh, – what's up with your watch? A lot of people don't are taking a liking or your, an interest in your watch. You're not wearing it today, but you've worn it a couple it was, episodes ago. Yeah, it was ago. given to me in Detroit, uh, and I do like it. I'm not a watch guy. And I've purposely not been mentioning it because I told sales, our sales, and I'm trying to be a team guy. Like, hey, I like this watch. I'm wearing it because I like it, and I think I could help make this a big brand or bigger than it already is and add value. So why don't we try to craft a relationship with something that I actually believe in and would wear? So uh, that I haven't said it because I'd like the relationship to happen. I don't know where it is right now. Interesting, because that was, that was a popular question. People are like, hey – Dave's not a typical jeweler guy. He barely wears watches. What's going on? Yeah, I, I haven't worn a watch. I've told this story a million times. When I sold Barstool the first time um, to turn in, I'm like, it's really kind of the first time I had any degree of money. Uh, and I was like, I need to buy myself a present. It's like, I don't know, 14 years of my life work, and I just sold half of it. Uh, I need to commemorate it, and I was going to buy a Rolex. And I went, looked. Rolexes were like fifty grand; they can be upwards, whatever. And I got right to the point of buying it, and like, what the fuck am I doing? I don't wear watches. This is stupid. And I bought the yellow Bronco, which doesn't run. Instead, that was my gift to myself. So maybe you should have went with the Rolex, huh? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's like a watch is a critical component if you're wearing a suit. And you kind of you really should have a watch to which I've never done, um, but I don't wear suits that often. So, all right. So so say posted. Do you think uh, sales is going to get a deal done with them? Or I don't know. Hopefully, it's in their hands. Just trying to you you know, put food on people's tables. I hear you. Now, did you read the Boston love letter I sent you or no? No. Nope. All right. Well, do you want to do that? Sure. Do you want me to? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Boston Love Leonard, uh, thanks to the global pandemic, there's almost no chance of meeting love naturally in the wild. True. Like ma like many 20-somethings in the world, I turned to online dating. According to the internet, there was a 50% increase in downloads of the apps such as Hinge, Twit, Tinder, Bumble, and more. People around the world feel the loneliest they've ever felt in their lives. You'd think men would finally seek someone special to spend their time with even in a global pandemic, but they don't. I met a guy on Hinge. He liked my profile. In fact, he sent me a rose, a new feature that allows users to send one rose a week to one person. Uh, and we made a plan to meet up on Thursday. He picked a place and a date, and we met up halfway. 
Uh, walked to the bar, sat in six degree weather outside in a patio because indoor dining's banned in Toronto. The conversation was fl- flowing. He was cute, funny, and had a British accent. He paid for the drinks, walked me home, kissed me goodbye, and let me know he was leaving for in four days and wanted to see me before he leaves the country for two months. I was confused but agreed to meet up again. Sunday, he texted me and asked if I wanted to come over to watch a movie. I offered to go for a walk instead. He said he was too tired that night and wanted to go for a walk the next day. He said he really wanted to see me before he left. My heart melted and I agreed. The next day, it is 8.15 p.m. and I haven't heard from him all day. He's leaving tomorrow. It'll pr- I'll probably never see him again. The end, I just don't get it. I mean, I get it. I'm not stupid. He's not interested in me. I'm just so tired of this. Can't we all be honest with each other? Can we just be kind to each other? Can I just find love already? It was hard enough before the pandemic, but now I feel so lonely. I'm smart, pretty. I have hobbies and amazing friends, but I want love. Love that I don't the love that I don't think I could find online. I want love without stupid games. I just want simple, supportive, kind, and passionate love. Is that too much to ask for? I mean, did she fuck him? No, the guy just completely uh, disappeared. I thought they hung out that one night. The yeah, second night. He was, so no 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 she want to go then, over, yeah she yes, wanted to yeah, go for a well, walk. Daddy, she the guy want to fuck. I mean that's the simplest one of all time. He doesn't want he want to fuck, and then maybe if you're lucky you get the walk. But this guy's obviously trying to hook up. Duh. Well yeah she, he wanted uh, he didn't want to do the walk. He wanted no the because it's tougher to like hook up on a walk than it is watching a movie on your couch. That's the most no brainer one of all time. Um, so whatever. I like you got to put out by the way I don't think putting out matters I think that's like a misnomer girls like if you're not going to like put out right away but if a guy likes you he's going to hang out with you again regardless hey, wait have you done a dating app I don't know if I've no. asked you that before no never never just obviously it's not your not your thing you don't have to no it's I don't know I've never I I, I don't know what the answer to that is I, I feel like my Instagram or social is sort of like a dating app. Like, if people want to find me, they can. And if you catch my attention, you can that way. But something about being on a dating app, I feel like I just get screenshotted. Not that I really give a fuck, but, oh, there's Dave. And probably end up talking to, like, you, Eddie. Like, I think I'm talking <laughs> to a pretty girl. I'm talking to you. Probably. Now, what about that, like, high-end, like, c- celebrity one? Raya? Like Raya or something? Yeah, have you done that? I'm on it, but I'm not on it. Like, I have a profile on there, and a couple occasionally it'll be sent to me, but it's not me. I don't run it. I don't know what the deal is. I'm not on like I'm not on any dating apps, no. That's like the next thing here, Dave, I think. It's like you need to be uh, caught walking down, holding hands with someone who's a, like a celebrity, you know? Like, you know, the big word is like canoodling, caught canoodling on, uh, on the pier. You know, Dave Porton, I caught canoodling. <laughs> Dave Portman caught canoodling. Who knows? I think that's what I, I don't so. interact with like famous people. Yeah, well, I think there are famous people on there, no? On Raya? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Probably I thought it was like Raya. probably like, I don't know if it's famous. I just feel like it's like, this may be, and I'm not on, but like it's like rich. It's like hot girls who are just hot looking for like rich guys, successful guys, yeah. I think. Because I know yeah. girls who are on Raya, and they're not famous by any stretch of the imagination. Okay. So I don't think you have to be famous either. I think it's like successful is the better word. If you have a following, you might be approved too. Like if you have, like if you're like a pseudo uh, couple, you know, thousand Instagram followers, and, you know, I think that that applies too, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not going to put a lot of trust in your knowledge of Raya. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. I feel You're like right. it's one of those things, like, if Eddie shows up, he's like, hey, I want to join Raya. Like, it's a cartoon, like, bars just f- slide down over your head. Like, the whole well, system a, locks. That's... The whole system locks on top of itself. Well, that's that's fucked up of you to say. I'm just, we're making conversation here. You brought up Raya. I'm telling you. I, I just okay. want, I was trying to illustrate, I don't think you're my go-to guy like hey how's the bears quarterback situation look i'll hit you up hey what do you think of the latest upgrades to raya i'm not going to the yeti school fair enough (laughs) fair enough uh well dave we haven't explained that picture but before we do can you please tell us about felix gray glasses i'm wearing them blue light and, and 
I need them because I'm in front of a computer screen so much, especially happening with DDTG and all the numbers, and I my eyes are twitching. I couldn't fall asleep. So I do wear them whenever, and, and now I can sleep. It makes it way, way, way better um, to battle the blue light. So uh, here you go. I wear them all the time. Anytime you see me wearing glasses, they're basically Felix Gray's. So uh, you go to felixgray.com slash Dave for the best blue light glasses in the market. That's felixgrayglasses.com slash Dave. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges, felixgrayglasses.com slash Dave. Dave. So they work. That's all I can say. Uh, they start at 95 bucks, um, and they truly, truly do work. Yeah, you can add a prescription too if you need it. Your eyes aren't meant to look at screens all day, people. So if you get, you're get having some headaches, you know, you're having a little stress, blurry vision, eye fatigue, go get some Felix Gray glasses at felixgrayglasses.com slash Dave. And they, they're stylish too, which is nice. Yeah, the Roblings. That's yep. Dave's uh, frame style. If you like the ones Dave wears, go buy those. They also raise money for the Barstool Fund, so good people over there. Go support them. Um, all right, explain that picture, uh, Michelangelo Kareem, if someone could throw that up there so Dave could see the <laughs> one that was picked this week. That's all-time video. That's when I when I went to Tico, Texas. This is a dance video. We're dancing. <laughs> Yeah, that that's what that was. We were out there just I was probably high as a kite at this point. Smoking weed. It it was at um South by Southwest except like you know how you have Broadway and then off Broadway. We were off South by Southwest. <laughs> but Tico did perform. Tico did perform. Again, she told me she was performing at South by Southwest. Not so much. It was just a little bar and it was a uh, one of the all-time videos, moments, days, weekends of barstool. Yeah, dress. I dressed like an old, <laughs> an old oil guy. What are the we most walked awkward? into the house. Tico didn't tell anybody that we were coming, and I was dressed with a cowboy hat. And these people were like, "Who the fuck is that guy?" One uh, of the most awkward things I've ever been a part of at barstool. When we walked into that house, and it was they all know, ended up being party. like great guys, and it was like fun, but it was uh, touch and go for a minute. Didn't they think you like it was your house? Like you were like the rich, uh, yeah, oil right. Guy that was right. They thought I came back because they just rented a house that I think they eventually got kicked out of. I still get like DMs or something from one of them who always like you want me to verify you on Twitter. <laughs> he he could get people verified. What was their last contact with Tico? I don't know. It hasn't been not recent. Occasionally we'll trade like tweets or DMs or I'll see something, but I haven't talked to her in a little bit. God, such a legendary character in the Barstool universe. Oh, yeah. All time. First ballot Hall of Famer, no doubt. Like, she should almost First be on the wall. Down. She should be on the mural, those, like, paintings we have. Like, she should be in there. We should just start Dude. mixing in, like, characters. Yeah, like, you talk about, like, like you know, obviously Stern's got, like, the whack pack. Like, Tico, Texas could be f- front and center. I remember we when we went to that party, like, I gave maybe a hundred dollars. I'm like, go buy booze. It was like we were visitors at the party, and she just, she was so upset. She just started crying because I was her plug, and it's like you gave the money to them. It's like to buy beer. So then we drove for like three hours to go find weed. Remember, she cut the line at the fucking yeah. barbecue place. That's on the video. Food truck. The video. Yeah, that's as yeah. mortified as I've ever been. Um, no, I'm not skipping. I can't do it. I can't skip, Tico. You you can do what you want. I'm not skipping. We're waiting in line. I'm fucking not doing it. You're on your own. Fucking Tico, Texas. <laughs> Tico, we can't do that. Yeah, and I, I mean, she stuck out. It was all white people, and she showed up. Oh, the only black person. So it was, wasn't like she bled, blended in, and she just cut the line. She called me on her phone. She's like, come to the front. I was like, I can't do it, Tico. Just can't do it. Everyone's staring at us. I'm dressed like a cowboy, and it, we look like idiots. And then and a truly inspiring performance that night at that club, <laughs> which she was pouring her soul out to you. Yeah, she her voice. She lost her voice, but she she sang through it like a true champion. Unbelievable. The Dave Portnoy Show with uh, Eddie and Company. It's on YouTube. Go check it out. You can go see that picture. Then go watch the Tico Texas video after you can uh, – See everything on there for you. Yeah. All time, all time saga. It was great. It ran, 
I feel like you can't even like yeah. I think Gaz, you guys did a doc on it, right? On her. Oh yeah, yeah that it's was the one of the best we docs we yeah. have. Yeah, because yeah, you can't watch that video without the context of two moments. I think the number, the first moment, obviously, was doing the rundown at Target. Yep. Tico, I think. Oh God! Oh God! Oh, what is that? I, 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 it's hot. If you ask me, showing her belly button, and then the second one. That might have been the same one, actually. The Sorry. Gate. Yes, when she's like, "What? What's the flake gate, Dave?" And you're like, "Tico, let me tell you about fucking." Dan what's and going Kevin on. left. It was just me telling her the entire story of the flake gate, like with her sitting. <laughs> she was enthralled by it at you know Target, and I was just told her every. I mean, that was right in the middle of the flake gate. It was a report that the NFL paid like $10 million to give the findings they wanted to hear. There's no scientific evidence. There's nothing to back it up. The balls wow. weren't even deflated. This has been going on for like six months now. They're trying wow. to fucking suspend Brady. He got four games, Tico. He got suspended for four fucking games. Four games, I saw it, yeah. For nothing! God, man. Those fucking days were wild. <laughs> Those days were wild. Um, this next video, I don't know if you've seen it. Paul just texted me before we went on. Uh, Alex Jones had like a four minute video talking about Barstool. Have you seen this yet? The conspiracy guy? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I haven't seen it. It's off the rails, obviously, because that's how he is. But we have it here. It's four minutes. It's a little long. Uh, but we'll, we'll play it here so people can listen to what was said, and then you could react after Dave. We don't need to quote, because of COVID, all these businesses are going out of business, Barstool Sports says. So buy this hat, and we'll donate a dollar to some business that's going out of business. It's like giving somebody a cigarette for a firing squad. So we're well, just gonna watch. Is this? I get. Does he say anything? Out? Is the? I get the. Gist he says a little bit towards the end, but I don't know. He's, about, he I mean, well, first of all, he's a crazy person, right? Second of all, I I don't his I. A lot of times people talk about us, they don't really know what they're talking about. I don't know what he means. We're giving buy a t shirt. We give you one dollar. That was just totally made up. And I don't think we were saying anything about covid i mean the fact i'm even addressing it is kind of beneath me and i think beneath us it's really simple it, we're helping small businesses stay in business and or close to 300 of them that would have gone out of business lost their livelihoods i don't know what his problem is that's like if you what if someone's dying of cancer you don't cure i mean whatever i don't i don't know what he's an idiot yeah, I don't. I didn't really. Under, I I get the point he was trying to make, sort of, kinda. Which like was he said he got some. I think his point was that it's not about raising money; it's about getting these people to go above and actually fight the machine and be like, "Hey, we shouldn't have been here in the first place." I believe because he, in his word, it's not like we're battling against COVID; we're battling against the shutdowns. If that makes sense. Sure. So, but what that those you can you can argue that. People should have revolted against the lockdowns if they believe that. You can certainly, I mean, I happen to think we live in law and order and you got to go with it, but it that's irregardless. I mean, you could still do that. These companies' livelihoods need business, and it's very easy for somebody like that to rant and rave, go talk to a business that's been around for 70 years that we helped save their generational business and tell them you shouldn't get any money. It's your fault. I mean, it's crazy logic. Yeah. I mean, it's Alex Jones. Yes. Uh, but it, it, it almost, and I know some people believe it, like somebody who goes and rants and raves like that with just wildly inaccurate information, you already have no credibility, and maybe that's part of why you go on a rant like that, but do like a second of research. Uh, we'll get into inside Barstool here. Before we do, though, let's talk about Truff, Dave. Uh, it's the first of its kind. It's a luxury hot sauce that's taken the Internet by storm. They have a unique blend of real black truffles, red chili peppers, organic agave nectar, and delicate spices. It pairs great with any type of pizza. Dave, would you ever get a little spicy, pour some, pour some Truff on the pizza? What do you think of that? Sure. Sounds great. Yeah, so Truff has over 10,000 five-star reviews and is the number one best-selling hot sauce on Amazon and at Whole Foods. Truff, that's T-R-U-F-F, -F, is American-made, produced locally in Southern California. The brand's Instagram and TikTok handles are at sauce, and they have the biggest following of any hot sauce brand in the world. 
Truff has been named on Oprah's favorite things gifting list two years in a row. Dave, I know you're big on Oprah's lists. Uh, use code Dave for 15% off site-wide plus free shipping at truff.com slash Dave. Go get some hot sauce. Uh, like a very, very quiet week inside Barstool, too. Uh, I don't know if you saw the tire controversy. Uh, KFC deleted a tweet. A well, yeah. I mean, I'm the, he deleted it. Well, I basically, I don't want to say told him to, but I suggested it live, like on the rundown. Like the, the chain of events, I think, is pretty much on the rundown where I was filming, taping, maybe this show. I don't know what I was doing. I was definitely in a podcast room when the Tiger News broke. And then we went down to do the rundown, and I saw Kevin's tweet making fun of it. Or not making fun of it. He thought it was an internet hoax. So I was like, what is this? And he said it, but it was still up. And then when we sat down, I was like, I would delete that if I were you just because people are going to take it, pull it out of context, which they did. So, you know, I – and he wasn't the only one. I think Big Cat and maybe Feidelberg also similar, like they thought it was an internet hoax. And the history of the car accident thing, I get why they did that. And obviously it, there was no animosity or ill will. Like they weren't, they didn't think it was real. Kevin didn't think it was real. I just thought once it became real, he didn't deal with the fire. Like I would have instantly had that down in the apology because people fucking hate us. And, I get his point. He's like, we. I don't take it down. I own it. I wear it. But in a case like this, it's just you're never going to win that fight. So I understood both sides. Yeah, and he had all his proof backed up. He had totally. like eight people who, like he, like in his head it made sense, but people who are reacting to seeing that car and knowing how fucking much of a, a, a big deal Tiger Woods is, like, people are going to freak out. And there's people, and it's ironic because we're the biggest Tiger Woods house in the world with the foreplay guys. But again, there and I, there's people who just fucking don't like Barstool, and they're going to look for any angle or any leverage or anything and they, they to fulfill their agenda, and that's what it provided, even though anybody with a brain, do you want to be like, oh, you should have waited? That was like... Cole, like you, you, of course you jump to make a joke, but it's like, he didn't even jump to make a joke. He, you know, he believed that like, it wasn't like, wait a minute, is this joke? It's like, nope, this is a joke. He was wrong, but that's a clearly anyone who had a problem with that. It's just, they're looking for trouble with us. Fine. It is what it is. And then uh, you might've talked about it on BFFs. Brianna gotten some, maybe, I don't want to say hot water, but there was a, a hive coming after her with with some OnlyFans. We talked or about something? it on the BFFs. So that girl Trish Paytas was on BFFs. It was garbage. She bought her OnlyFans, and like six people in her office are sitting around watching the paid OnlyFans. And Trish's point was like that stealing or pirating, which is a lunacy. It's like if someone buys a fight, you can't you can't have your friends over to watch the fight. It's crazy. That's there's just no logic to what she said. Yeah, I think redistributing it is piracy, not that. No, that's d literally if you paid for it and people watching over your shoulder, that get out of here. It's crazy. Now, Trish, I actually appreciate she's a genius, and her job is to stay in the headlines, and that's exactly what she did. But even did her, she, I don't think Trish would be like, yeah, no, I don't give a fuck. Did she say that's what she was doing? No, I'm just giving no. her more. I'm giving her credit. Gotcha. Uh, did you did you catch any of that dozen feud? Nate Dog and PFT looked a little serious on the rundown. No, I didn't see it. You should check it out, Dave. I know you like when the dog gets after it. The was dog he was out? Barking. Was, was the monkey out? He was. Uh, he was sniffing around. He was. He was sniffing around. <laughs> yeah, about, what? about what? So, so uh, Dave, I'm telling you, you got to do an episode of the dozen. This show is fucking great. Jeff D. Lowe puts in a ton of hard work, and it's it's it's, it's honestly a great product we do. And uh, Jeff, it's, it's Jeff's baby, but you're really um, sucking his dick good here. Well, he deserves it. You don't fucking pay attention to shit, so someone's got to give some I'm credit. I'm just saying, here, Dave. sucking his dick good. Well, I'm, I'm, well, you should give him a fucking well, pet you want on the me back. To suck I think. his dick. Yeah, you should uh, at least give him a little suck. I, I think he deserves it. Okay, I'll suck Jeff D. Lowe's dick. Is that what you want? <laughs> yeah. So, regardless, all right. So, basically, the the original format of the show was Brandon Walker and PFT. They're like the experts. They're really good at trivia. So then, other three man teams. I'm on a team with Clem and Rico. The other three Chicago guys are on the team. You face them. And now Jeff's bringing a lot more people in, and they needed one more person. Nate was on a team with Fran and Trent, 
And Fran's really fucking good. Like, she's great at pop culture, great at sports. And uh, they pulled her off of Nate and Trent's team. And Nate had he took exception to it. I think Trent was actually a little mad about it, too. So the dog and was put her on a different team. He's Brandon Walker and uh, and um, PFT took her. So essentially creating a super team. Did Fran have a say in it? Fran did have a say in it. She was she willingly went to South Beach with, oh, with Wade. And well, I mean, the Bosch. dog is nobody to blame but himself. Then you can't get mad. What? Like that's you can't get mad at the team if they if they recruit and the players like yeah I'll go to you I don't want to be with these guys what I don't what's Nate mad he has no grounds he he was he was Dan Gilbert essentially he wrote the letter I've been saying but Dan Gilbert was I think far more mad at LeBron than he was at the Heat good point good point I don't know how how to exactly structure the uh, the comparison but you get what I'm saying. Well, I structured uh, it, was, it. I structured it. I, I I feel like Nate and Trent should be mad at Fran, not mad at PFT and B Walk. Sounds like Fran turned her back. Yeah. All right. Speaking of LeBron, actually, did you see he reposted million yeah, dollars I saw worth that. of game? Million dollars worth of game doesn't get the. I mean, half the time I don't know what the fuck they're talking about or who they're talking to. But I see. I look. It's like, oh, he. They're fucking huge. Beasts, fucking. Stoop I don't know dog. if we're not promoting them right or what, but they're and I know they're big, but they should be like intergalactically big because they're funny to anybody. I mean, they're pulling huge numbers on YouTube. I think they're pretty fucking big. They should be fucking intergalactically big. Like you should walk down. Like all right, I mean, let me say it this way: not enough white people. Is that can I say it that way? Not enough white people know who they are. Yeah, I think that's fair. Like they should. They're. they're what? Somebody just say something? I was checking the YouTube numbers. I was going to show you them. They actually are. They're doing... Uh, here, look. Their episode last week had 840,000 views in a week. They had DaBaby on, another big rapper. How many of those Half people do you know, Dave, that you could read off that list? Well, like, I know DaBaby. Like, I reckon... I didn't know who Poo Shiesty was till I heard it. I didn't know who Polo G was. But, yeah, no, these are big numbers. But, okay... These are big numbers. These are like sort of not always, but those are like uh, BFF numbers. And to me, they should be fucking way bigger than that. So they should be caller daddy numbers is what you're well, saying. Well, no, Instagram's, I mean, YouTube's different, but they should be like millions. Those are BFF's numbers, essentially. Correct. Yeah. So I'm giving them credit. I think they should be, you know what we got to do. Combine our audience. Can you have two more different audiences than that? Like the BFF audience and the million dollars worth of games? You know what? We should have million dollars worth of games. I got to come up with all the ideas. I'm mad at my BFF screw. Let's get million dollars worth of game on BFFs. Now, that would be fucking funny. What's up with BFFs? They were just, Paul was unorganized today. Paul, any comment? No, we talked about it. We fucked up. We got to wear it. As, it's been a while. We've had a good run recently, and, and we just. I think we got we just got lazy. I don't know if it's lazy is the answer or just you know take the eye off the prize for a minute and we we wore it. We'll be back. And then my final thing here: what's up with uh, your guy Tyler O'Day? He's got all these lists. I've been following just- that from afar. I saw him at uh, <laughs> he was eating the other day. I had one of those, like one of those trendy hats on. I don't know. I listen. One thing that I do think has happened, if I'm reading the vibes right, since I've been out of the office, he's getting a little too big for his britches. And listen, I was the first Tyler O'Day guy in the like I hated him, but then I had his whole song like "Girl from Ipanema." We had him in the office; he'd sing on the show. But now everyone seems to be an O'Day fan, like the O'Daniacs or whatever. So he may have to get chopped back down to size. Well, I don't know what these cheapies are, Dave. Do you know what a cheapie is? No. Could someone explain what a cheapie is to Dave and I? Uh, from what I've heard, it's just like a positive group of people on Twitter that just like try to be positive to one another and everyone that they come in contact with. So if you want to be positive, you're a cheapie. That's There's a lot I of I love yous that uh, get exchanged between the cheapies. Very supportive, loving group of uh, internet what, what, personalities. What is this like? Is this unique to O'Day, or is this a wa- internet thing? From I think it's like a Twitter thing that O'Day is involved in, 
Like, if you want to be a cheapie, you just join the group, and then you just be positive. But it's not like it's not like uh, you're a little monster, which is like Lady Gaga or your stoolies bar. I don't if, think if people say cheapie, are they thinking, oh, you're part of the O'Day? No, I don't think that. Like, a, if you're a cheapie, that means like you worship O'Day. I think he's just in it and like heavily involved. I, I have it. the actual definition from Tyler because Erica asked me this. She's like, "What is this shit?" And it says he said Tyler said the cheapies are an online community started by someone who acted under a pseudonym. Him Big Tasty, who had a short lived podcast called the Cheap Seeds Podcast. Fans of the podcast were called Cheapies. The podcast is now defunct, and now it's a quite literally a random assortment of people online who call themselves Cheapies and tweet each other, telling each other that they love each other. It is a purely positive space. Anyone who doesn't like the Cheapies are referred to as wet blankets. Total membership is around 2,000 people. I mean, it sounds almost non existent. 2,000 people. I can't fucking wipe my ass with 2,000 people. So you're not you're not actively trying to join the cheapies. No, it's saying. news to me. I'm not actively that. that yeah, D- Dave's a big love guy. I, I was gonna say the a group of people who just constantly tell each other how great they are and how positive. That doesn't sound like my type of party. It's like the Jeff D. Lowe sucking his dick Eddie thing we just wanted to go through. Well, well I mean, he just sucked million dollars worth of game dick if we want to go there too. So well, when has uh, fucking Jeff D. Lowe had Pooh Bear on million dollars worth of game? Who I, exactly? <laughs> Whatever. Get Pooh Bear. Get, I saw I saw Wallow breaking it down for Pooh Bear, and I'm like, all right. Who is Pooh Bear? Do you actually know who that get, is? Get, learn. Do your, do your homework. I'm doing my homework. I don't need to know about Jeff D. Lowe, all right? I know what Jeff D. Lowe does. Jeff D. Lowe, once I fucking slapped him around a little bit a year ago, he's been on the up and up, and he's good now. There we go. All right. See? See? <laughs> um, all right. So the Chief is out. Pooh like, yeah, Poo-shiesty. that's his name. Little Pooh Bear? No, what Pooh Shiesty? Pooh Shiesty. Pooh Shiesty. He's not Pooh Bear. You tried to trick me into calling him Pooh Bear. He's Pooh Shiesty. I mean, Pooh Bear is a guy, too. Christopher Robin? Yeah, one of the all time quotes. My, one of my favorite quotes. What is Winnie that? Winnie the Pooh. Um, what the fuck? Yeah, you really love it, huh? No, it's like, what time is it? Like, today. That's the quote. <laughs> Something like that. It's like just live in the moment. Something like that. Get you get your Winnie the Pooh up. All right, Christopher Ron. You I don't even someone, know what I know what Winnie the me. Pooh is. All right, Pooh Shiesty. I'm upset too with O'Day. By the way, I feel like I was at the forefront with you on the O'Day love, and I I, I haven't been named either, so I'm upset. All right, we'll do some listener emails. We'll get out of here. Uh, once again, Dave Portnoy Show at BarstoolSports.com. If you want to send one in, that's the spot to do it. Dave Portnoy Show at BarstoolSports.com. On the topic, this one's from Matt. Dave, do you actually listen to any Barstool podcasts? No. So nothing's in the rotation? No. Okay. This next one's from Nathan. I mean, that's not a shock Is to anybody. A- no, but I well, you just like uh, if I'm not I'm mistaken, music. You're just I'm a music a, uh, guy. So like on the private on the PJs, you just go music. Yep. Could you come up with the last podcast at Barstool you listened to? Like, have you like an episode of just just? Yeah, I gotta check this. I gotta see what this is. <laughs> no, I mean a million dollars worth of game occasionally when I because it's like I don't know what the hell's going on, so I try to check in and see what they're doing. But no, I don't. I'm not an audio guy. No, no, it's not just. It's not just ours. I don't listen to podcasts. Were you like an EI guy or a uh, a little bit other? back? But then I got, like before that, I got off of it. I got sick of audio and I just went to music. Okay, so nothing. There's your answer, Matt. Uh, this one's from Nathan. Has there ever been any talk about actual physical barstool merch stores? Yeah, there have been. What's the what's we've like gone the back and forth storefronts? You need someone to run it. I, I'm in favor of it. it. It I think elevates the brand. I don't know if you just want to sell like cheap T-shirts, but I I like the idea of it. I like physical. I like letting people be able to like feel and touch the brand. I really wanted like a physical, and now we are figuring out the radio stuff. But like a a, a studio in Manhattan where people could come watch. You know, maybe you have the merch store like attached to it, kind of like an experience. That'd be sick. Would that be like I mean, the old just ESPN the restaurants, shit. basically? Like they had the ESPN, they did live shows there, they did a little bit. I think actually Greek Town has merch in the gift shop. 
I want to say that there Maybe. was Maybe. It was a, so disoriented. Like, it was still COVID. I didn't even see the gift shop. Yeah, but I want to say even behind the bar, there was, like, cubby holes. But I could be I could be wrong where people could, you know, get a I mean, most like casinos do have the gift shop, but, you know, yeah, that was Detroit. That'd be pretty sick, though. Um, okay, this next How one's from How much time Mike. do we have left? Because I could take a piss. Should I piss I got, and come I got, back? I got, I, got, I got three questions left. Okay, because be I've been holding this piss. I don't want to rush it. I'm, in, I'm fine, but I got to piss. We're good. We got three questions. All right, go. I may piss All my right. pants. This one's from Mike. Tax season is here. How big of a mess is it for you? I have people now, but I owe a shit ton. <laughs> just, just like, like like an actual tax team or like a tax guy. I have an accountant. I I have a new like team because I've elevated into a little bit more of a high net worth individual. But I owe a lot of fucking taxes. I owe a lot of taxes. Were you like stunned when you saw? No, that I knew I was gonna. But I owe a lot of fucking taxes. I owe a lot and of what- fucking taxes. You have like a smirk on your face. That's it's just like, a lot of taxes. I owe a lot of taxes. <laughs> and like back throw in the day, out a number, and I'm not going to say how much I owe, but I will say higher or lower. Fifty three. Uh, no, I'll go with. Uh, what were you going to say? I was going to say fifty three million, but that's got in be taxes. Yeah. Lower, Eddie. If I owed fifty three in taxes, I would own a sports team. I think. Can I ask you why? Can I tell you why? I can't tell you why I said that. But there's a reason why I said that. Uh, I'll say. Th- what are you being like? What What are you being like? Mysterious? Am I wrong? Like well, because don't dealer? you get taxed on the equity? Yeah. So like you isn't your equity like three hundred something? No. Where are you coming up with that? I think I saw that somewhere. I heard that oh, somewhere. No. Well, no. and by I'm the way, saying- I don't have a lot of it. But no, you're way off. Um, I'll say. Well, you already guessed, and I said lower, so you lose. Four, 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 four mil. You already lost. Go on. Next <laughs> question. You guessed fifty-three million in taxes. I was I was thinking of paying that off your 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 pen equity, so that was a bad guess. Um, sorry. Two more here. Um, Zach. One's from Zach. Now that pen is at, now that pen is steady at over a hundred. Any chance you start lobbying the powers to get more investors? I'm not sure I understand the question. Like, isn't there a way now, like, you could cut more people in to Penn? No, that, no, that, that, that's, no, I don't think we're looking for more investors. Last one from Ryan. Any big plans for DP44? We have a board meeting. What's that mean? means we have a board meeting with Penn, Chern, and myself, Erica, on March 22nd, my birthday. That's my big plans. I think Gaz is coming to Miami to celebrate it, but I'll be in a board meeting. Oh, nice. Well, that'll be fun for you and Gaz. Well, no, I'm not uh, going to be here. I'm going to be in a board meeting. Well, how long does a board meeting take? All day. Really? Yeah. It's oh, a long time. Oh. All right, so that doesn't sound like it's going to be no. a good DP. For no, I don't year. have I don't have great plans. I'll either be in Chicago or New York. All right, that's it. Anything else? Sounds like you're teaching. A, I heard you're teaching a class or something today. Yeah, Dave Grutman does this. Uh, teaches at FIU. That's why I am in. Uh, let's not release it till after tonight because it's a surprise. But he teaches like a, some sort of hospitality entrepreneurship class. And uh, he asked me to be a guest speaker, so I'm doing that tonight. That's why I'm in Miami. Nice, nice. All right, that's it. Uh, you got to go take that piss? Yeah, big time. All right, have a nice piss. All right, thanks, Eddie. See ya. All right, that's it for today, everybody. We'll see you next week.